On today's IDEO Insights, I want to share with you some tips on how to fish minnow profile baits so you can be more successful out there on the ice. In-depth outdoors insights, tips, tricks, and hacks from the pros. So what is a minnow profile bait? Uh, for me, the baits I fish most often are the ultralight rip and wrap and the slab wrap from Rapala. Every tackle manufacturer worth their salt has come out with a similar bait in recent years for a very simple reason. They catch fish if you know how to fish these baits. So uh, one of the things that I see anglers doing incorrectly most of the time is they're overworking the baits. These are very active, aggressive baits. Uh, now one of the things you'll notice if you watch how I fish one of these baits, I'm not raising my rod tip very high when I come on the upstroke to get that bait started to work. Nine inches at the most. And also pay very close attention to the speed of that lift. What I think most anglers are doing, and it's causing them to struggle, is they love the feedback these lures provide back to the rod tip. There's a lot of vibration when you lift that bait. And what that translates to is a real positive experience. You're feeling all that vibration, you know that lure's working. But there's so much vibration there in the water column, it's actually turning the fish off most of the time. So what I'm trying to do is very short lifts, about nine inches. And all I want that bait to do is just wobble in the water column. I'm not looking for that real intense buzz that these baits are capable of. In fact, if you fish a, a number six or number seven rip and wrap and you give it a good hard rip, you will actually hear the rattles in 20 plus feet of water when you're standing on top of the ice. Imagine what that sounds like to a walleye. So slow your cadence way down. Nine inch lifts, barely feel that wobble in the water and then twitch, twitch. Wait a second, repeat, nine inch lift, twitch, twitch. You can see in the way that I'm fishing these baits, they're not nearly as aggressive as most anglers fish them. Once you learn to slow down, be less aggressive with your rod tip, you're gonna be a lot more successful converting fish that come in to look at these baits and actually getting them to hit. So the next thing I wanna do is we're gonna actually show some video of an interaction with a fish in a slab wrap up on Upper Red Lake. And the camera is focused on the, uh, the display of my LX9. And the reason I wanna do that is I want to share some tips on how to convert those fish that come flying in and get them to actually hit. It's quite easy once you follow a real simple recipe, so watch this. So what we've got going on here, you'll notice that I'm keeping my bait a couple feet off the bottom. That's a lot higher in the water column than a lot of walleye anglers will fish. What has just happened is a nice walleye has come in and you'll notice immediately what I've started to do, actually I've done two things. I'm paying very close attention to the distance that fish came in below that slab wrap. I do that regardless of species or bait I'm fishing. I'll explain that later. The second thing I did is I started to move that bait up in the water column, away from that fish, which might seem counterintuitive. But think of it this way. Uh, every time a walleye ambushes a bait fish, what does it expect it to do? It expects it to run away. If it just stands there and doesn't try to flee, that's actually unnatural. And by following this recipe of see that fish come in under the bait, start to pull it away, you can actually trigger a very aggressive response where if you just leave that bait right in front of their nose, they tend to be a lot less aggressive. So we'll start that back up again. I'm doing the nine inch lift, twitch, twitch. There was the bigger, the bigger jump. Twitch, 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 twitch. Here he comes. You can see he's actually turning, spinning around, investigating that bait. See how fast he came? But he missed it. So stop this right here. I told you earlier that one of the first things I did was paid very close attention to the distance that walleye came in under my bait. And I do that, like I said, with every fish species because that tells me the distance below my bait, that fish is comfortable engaging that bait. What I don't want to do here is after that fish takes a swipe, you might be uh, inclined to just drop that bait right down to that fish. You took a swipe at it once, right? What happens if you do that is, very often those fish are like, whoa, wait a minute, that's, again, very unnatural. Often, they'll just swim off. So if a fish takes a swipe at my bait, what I do is, I remembered in my head how far below my bait that walleye was when he first came in, and I'm gonna set up that scenario again. I'm gonna reestablish that distance and get right back into my cadence. Nine inch pop, twitch, twitch. Nine inch pop, twitch, twitch. We'll start the video again. Uh, the fish has taken one swipe at it, it's re-examining it. I'm right back in the same cadence. Boom. The fish hits. Fish come in topside. These baits are really very easy to fish as long as you remember just a couple of things. Slow down that cadence. Yeah, it feels good coming back through the rod tip, that intense vibration, but you really don't want that most of the time. 
Uh, these baits need to be fished much more subtly if you really want to get the most out of them. So hope you enjoyed this IDO Insights and found it useful. My hope is it's going to help you put a lot more fish on the ice. For more tips, tricks, and hacks from the pros, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at In-Depth Outdoors TV. 